I don't ever remember driving a lap uh, in a in an endurance race and, and Le Mans in particular that wasn't as fast as I could go given the car I had, the track conditions, the age of the tyres or a fuel consumption target. Winning Le Mans, how tough is that for everybody involved because it can take years to build up to it. Uh, I was lucky enough to be lead driver at Jaguar, Nissan, Toyota and Bentley in terms of helping develop a, a new car. And you start off literally from the beginning of where you're going to sit in the car uh, and all the fundamentals you need as a driver to control it. And remembering, of course, you've got to get in and out a lot. You, you, you're in a race that has 30 odd pit stops scheduled and you hope there's never any more than that. So it is about comfort, it's about accommodating three drivers of different height, different size, and desires with the pedals, uh, seat belts, maybe a packer for the seat, the mirrors, the screen, the wipers, the lights, so critical. A lot of that tends to get put to the back and delayed because fundamentally you've got to get the car up and running and the aero and the cooling and the geometry of the suspension, developing tyres with it specifically for that car. And it all starts to come together, but it takes a long time. And then you'll head off. Once you've got the car fundamentally working, you'll do uh, maybe a 24 hour test. I've done them at Paul Ricard, Manicor, Spa. The Spa one got snowed off in the end. Um, it's the most soul destroying thing in the world, but you've got all the team of drivers in from, you know, if there are three cars, maybe you'll get all nine drivers in, but maybe there'll be six. You start a race with one car on the track for 24 hours and you just keep going until it breaks down so that everybody can get in the groove of fixing things that need sorting out, refueling, tires, you know, and, and fix things like the lights and, and build it up and then Yes, the time you've, you've created all of the tools around that car in terms of, of the aero efficiency that you need, for example, at Le Mans to, to make sure you don't use too much fuel, you've got to be able to get down the straights without being passed, past the back markers, have you got stability under braking? Um, and so you tend to test with Le Mans downforce on, which makes the car quite skittish at somewhere like Manicourt, for example. But uh, and a bit of a handful, then it, you plug it into the track at Le Mans and it just feels perfect. So, and get everybody comfortable, get, get the engineering side of it worked out. Uh, and then the top teams, of course, practice gearbox changes, you know, the back end, rear wing, all of those things uh, down to the rip-offs you put on the lights to make sure they don't get damaged in the daytime. So you've got some lights, the rip-offs on the screen and a thousand different things you need to build up to before you get to the race itself, which is also a challenge because you've got to get three drivers through in, in the daylight, a certain number of laps on the pace, get them through uh, qualifying at night, get the car qualified, absolutely understand your, your mechanical and aero setup for the race, your, your fuel consumption confirmed, and then you set about it. It's a 36 hour event really at Le Mans because you're going to get up early, do the warm up and then all of the razzmatazz before the start, which is really good fun, uh, where you're you know, waving at the crowd, everybody being introduced on the grid. The cars look fantastic on the grid as the herring boned in and, and you're getting ready to go. And finally, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, you get underway. And if you finish that race and maybe have a little celebration afterwards, you, you will be going one and a half days without really any sleep, especially for the, for the team and the mechanics. So, and off you go. I don't ever remember driving a lap uh, in, a, in an endurance race, and, and Le Mans in particular, that wasn't as fast as I could go, given the car I had, the track conditions, the age of the tires or a fuel consumption target you have to drive flat out because somebody will and they'll finish. And it's about managing the traffic, managing the conditions. It's quite a short night at Le Mans. 
unlike Daytona, which is a very long night. Uh, but if your lights are good, then then it's fine. And, and key parts of Le Mans lit up anyway. And you just got to hope you don't trip over a back marker, catch up uh, somebody else's accident or mistake and wiping you out. Um, you have to trust each other as drivers. You leave your single seater mentality behind where your first job in a team is to beat your teammate. Now you've got to work with them and you've all got to be comfortable in the car trust each other that if you've been over a curb or over revved it or whatever you've got to be honest and say so so that they can they can check the car out and and off you go and if you're lucky and you can get to the end and so many times so many hours into a race uh, and then a little silly little things that i had it happen at jaguar where i thought we can win this win this Le Mans 24 hours and a tiny little pinhole appeared in a radiator, a uh, metal radiator pipe, and we were out. And uh, then I did uh, get lucky enough to become part of the winning team with Jaguar in 1990. Um, but it's the end of probably years of preparation. The logistics of doing that race I remember we had five Jaguars uh, in the race at one point at the start of the race. That's 15 drivers, 135 people working on the cars. As I said, over 30 scheduled pit stops. Uh, logistically, that makes Formula One look relatively easy, I have to say, uh, through that period of time. But if you ever have to come in the pits and, and back the car in the garage, uh, or take the engine cover off or, or address something, you're probably not going to win the race. 